Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Delighted that you have stopped by. This is on Spain, looking at Castilla Leon, and we are here actually on series five, the final series of Castilla Leon for the Diploma WSET. We are going to be looking at the other DOs outside of the four that are listed there on previous series. And that includes the likes of Arribes, Alanza, and also Cigales. We'll go through those three in this part and the other ones in part two. Okay, let's rock and roll talking about our three DOs here. And we're actually going to start our journey uh, right towards the end of the Duero River in Spain before it then turns into northern Portugal as the Duro. So we are here at the Dio Arribes. Used to be called Arribes del Duero, but to avoid confusion with Ribera del Duero, which is all the way up the Duero River over here, as one can see. Let me just make sure I got my pointer on. Yeah, here. Then, oh, do you know what? I'm going to draw the river so you actually get a sense of uh, um, where this river is. So the river actually sort of comes through, uh, it comes through here, starts to turn around here, comes down here, it's kind of this area, this area, and then it forms that border with Portugal before then moving into Portugal. So of course we are talking about this area here, which is at the last stages of the Duero River whilst it is in Spain, before it turns further west into, of course, Portugal. Now, this DO is actually a little bit different, and one would expect that because it doesn't necessarily follow on from uh, Zamora or Toro uh, or Rueda or Rivera del Duero. Because of its proximity to Portugal, it has more of these more uh, Western influences. Um, so we have quite famed varieties here like Juan Garcia, Rufete, and Malvasia Castellana. Um, so they're actually found here. It's not a large DO. It's somewhere around 350 hectares. And it's been a DO recognized since 2007. Um, so it roughly sits at an altitude of about 500 to 800 meters. Now, we know we've talked about the Duero River um, as it heads south from the Sistema de Verico, down through Soria and then turns westward through Ribera. We're talking about altitudes up there of towards a thousand. And of course, as it traverses west, it's dropping in its altitude. And here it's at highest points of around 800 down to about 500 in its latter points. So you have some of the lowest altitudes for Spanish vineyards on the Duero River in this area. It's an old area, quite traditional, quite rustic. Lots of uh, vines here that are bush vines, like you see in this picture. The soils are also quite poor with granitic based bedrock and then lots of weathered sand on top of that. The two great varieties that really do uh, fly the flag for the identity of the region are these two red varieties. So first of all, Juan Garcia. Uh, which is a cross between Cayetana Blanca and Alfroquiero, which is, of course, Portugal. So the first grape coming from Extremadura down in the place south of this in sort of southern Mazetta or central Mazetta plain. And then Alfroquiero, which comes from sort of central and southern parts of Portugal. Now, the origin of the name uh, Juan Garcia is actually not known and it's not linked to the famous drug lord uh, of the same name. So there's no link uh, to it in that case. Now, the old vine example of Juan Garcia are generally the best ones, certainly on those that are poorer soils, old vines, and you get deeply colored, highly perfumed and floral wines with a herbal element, a red fruit touch, and moderate alcohol. Great value for money as well because of their lack of fame in comparison to other varieties. Rufete, which is also called Tinta Pinera in Portugal, has close kinship to Torriga Nacional 
and also Prieto Picudo, which is more famous up around the city of Lyon. It's not a very successful grape variety because it's very demanding and late ripening. It performs well only in very specific sites where it can reach full maturity. And the majority of the wines actually are light in color, low in alcohol, have a very high acidity, and that can sometimes highlight the astringency of the tannic structure. But in some years, and given the best clones that are the least productive from older vines, the grapes can ripen fully, and that's towards the end of October, start of November, and they are capable of producing very good wines that are richer in colour, bigger in body, and have flavours of red fruits that are potential for ageing well in bottle. Not unlike, say, a Samur Cabernet Franc, for example. If you do have any comments or questions, please do get in touch. You can do so by commenting on this video below. Maybe you've been to one of these more unusual, unheard of DOs. Maybe you've tried the wines and you want to share your experience. It'd be great to hear it. Make sure you click like and subscribe whilst you are in that area. Now we're moving to Ribera del Duero, but north of it. We're going to Arlanta, which is just to the north of that area. So this is actually re, re, uh, sort of located quite strategically between Ribera and Rioja. It's not absolutely sandwiched, but it is located between these two um, very well-known uh, DODOCAs. It has similars to both as well, because it grows uh, Tinto Fino or Tinto del Pais, Albio, which we find in Ribera, and Viura, which we find in La Rioja. Uh, Garnacha and Menthia are also grown here, but to small extents. And this is actually about the same size as Arribes in terms of hectareage, about 350 hectares. So we are around the town of Lerma, L-E-R-M-A. It's north of Ribera by about uh, 40 kilometers. Uh, and then it's south of Burgos as well. Uh, and wine production is thought to have dated back here a thousand years or so, but many of them, of course, will claim that. Now, the region runs approximately 75 kilometers along the river, the eponymous river of the same name, so Arlanza River, either side of the city of Lerma, as it flows east to west be before joining the Pizurga, before that flows down, of course, into the Duero River. Uh, and that's the river that flows through Sigales, the Pizurga River, uh, throwing in that area. OK, what about the area specific for viticulture then? So to be honest, the growing conditions here are actually quite similar to the rest of Castilla Leon. It's continental, hot, dry summers and cold winters. But there is good altitude here because we are sort of heading into the Sistema Ribérico. So we have altitude here sitting between 750 to 1200 meters. And that brings, of course, generally cool uh, conditions. And then, of course, you get that, um, that coolness by the diurnal difference as well. Now, broadly speaking, vineyard sites north of the Arlanza River, remember that runs from uh, east to west. The northern area has more clay-based soils and the southern area has more limestone. So you tend to get more fuller wines in the north and more brighter uh, wines in the southern section. So that's the Arlanza uh, Dio complete. If we do follow the Arlanza River as it heads to the river called the Pizurga, then that's the river, of course, which then goes through our next Dio, which is Sigales. And this really is pink country, pink wine, Rosado wine country, around, uh, well, just under 2,000 hectares under vine. So it is therefore um, six, seven times larger than the two last that we were talking about. So on the Pizuerga River, it is the river which is the Duero's second largest tributary uh, running down south into, the, uh, into that river. Um, it's continental, as one would expect. It's very similar to Arlanza, but with just a little less altitude. 
um, quite a lot, actually. Uh, it's um, very dry summers, long, harsh winters, and then, of course, low, irregular rainfall of around 400 millimetres of rain per year. Drought is a concern here. The vineyards lie at about 700 to 800 metres. So the, the lower end of uh, Lanza that we were talking about previously. Um, what else do we find here in Sigales? So very uh, almost rustic again in traditional region. Uh, grapes classically are purchased from Majuelos uh, and the Majuelos are family owned farmed plots. So typically larger companies would buy from these and cooperatives. Many sellers sit at more than 10 meters below ground, like in this picture. And of course, this is common in areas where the soil and the bedrock is um, actually quarryable. So you can actually get some good produce from it. And we got these lovely caves as a result. Um, it's common also in Alanza. It's common in Ribera del Duero as well, but they make a bit of a song and dance about it here in Sagales. Um, so we talked about it being famous for the pink wines. So uh, pink wines are important, but also in the traditional production method of a pink wine, which is called the clarete method. I have spoken about this on the introductory to Spanish wine. Now, these wines are typically made from a mixture of black and white grapes, mostly black, of course, not like that picture so much, but they are macerated, sometimes beyond the beginning of fermentation, pressed, and then fermented together, like the sort of Syrah Viognier's of Cote Roti. Uh, for that, for red, this is for our rosé production. These wines are classically matured in oak, sometimes for long periods of time, which leads to a reduction in primal fruit character, and then gets more texture, more character, and more kind of all savory tertiary notes to it. Um, and it's famous here. They, they have this kind of almost onion skinny pink colour to them, which is quite classic. And they are delicious wines, of course, to look out for. OK, let's take a look at these three regions, three districts. We're going to focus here in white outline there, Castilla y Leon. Talked about this multiple times now. And of course, running through the centre of this large uh, autonomous province is the Duero River, the real life force of the region, having a real big impact on many of the DOs. But we're going to look at three of the DOs here. So first of all, we're going to focus on Alantha. So Alantha is uh, located um, north of Ribera del Duero, around the town of Lerma, south of Burgos, about 350 hectares here, around the river, also called the Arlanza, uh, and about vineyards at about 750 to 1200 meters, some of the highest in Castile and Leon. Then we have the, the Vino Rosado country, that's the Dio Sigales, about 2000 hectares near Valladolid, around the Puzguera river at about seven to 800 meters. And then finally, towards the Portuguese border, we have Arribes, about 340 hectares, at much lower altitudes compared to the rest, about 500 to 800 meters on sandy granite, focusing on things like Juan Garcia and also Rofete and Malvasia Castellana. So there you are for these three alternate uh, DOs, which uh, you can find some very interesting wines from. Okay, that brings me to the end of part one, looking at Arribes, Alanza and Sigales. We are now going to go on to the second part where we cover all the other little bits and, of course, the major vino de la tierra of this area. That is only going to be available to those of you who subscribe to my e-learning portal. You'll see that direction at the bottom of the slide, www.winewithjimmy.com. Once again, any questions, concerns, any comments, maybe you have enjoyed these wines, maybe you like the Rosados from Sigales, for example, please do get in touch by commenting on this video below. Great to hear from you. And I do look through some of these comments on my own as well. Make sure you click like and subscribe. And if you find yourself in the UK, come and say hello and come and see me at one of my establishments for maybe a class a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.